Hi everyone and welcome, this is the Apostate Prophet. Today I want to tell you a beautiful story of forgiveness, love and compassion by the most perfect human being to ever walk the face of the earth, Muhammad. Muslims have likely heard of this story already, others should too. There was a Jewish woman in Prophet Muhammad's time. She used to clean her home all day, find all the garbage that is inside, and then put all the garbage on Muhammad's doorstep to defy him and to insult him, just because. But one day she fell sick and Muhammad didn't find any garbage on his doorstep, except himself. So Muhammad, as compassionate and forgiving and loving and brilliant and amazing as he is, wondered where this woman was. So he went to visit her and wished her good health. The Jewish woman was amazed by Muhammad's brilliant, amazing, wonderful, beautiful character. So she realized that Muhammad was indeed a prophet and then she embraced Islam right away. I feel so much peace right now when I hear this story. It is so beautiful, so inspiring. But most of all, it is complete bullshit. The story as I just told it is a very, very popular story. It's a very well known story, especially among those we call moderate Muslims. I heard of this when I was a Muslim. You can even see this online when you see claims, factual statements about Islam being violent. You see that some Muslims copy paste this story to show how beautiful, how amazing, how brilliant, how forgiving Muhammad was. If you're a Muslim, you have probably heard of this story and you probably believe this story to be true. But it isn't. It doesn't exist. There is no such story in the biographies or the hadiths, the fundamental narrations, and definitely not in the Quran. This story is not even doubted or anything. It is entirely fabricated. Apparently some people thought that making up a story and painting Muhammad as this uh, virtuous guy who never gets angry and who even goes to visit his enemies would somehow make everything much more beautiful. But this story would be a very, very big contradiction to the reality. The reality, as we know Muhammad, was quite different. Muhammad wasn't such a patient, amazing person. But hey, let me show you a real story, found in real Islamic scripture, in the biographies of Muhammad, and the narrations, the hadith about Muhammad. The following is a real story, an undoubted one, found in the Sahih Bukhari, the most reliable source after the Quran. It shows you exactly how Muhammad handles such things. To summarize it, some people who disliked Muhammad tried to embarrass and harass him by putting the intestines of a camel on Muhammad's back while he was praying. Muhammad didn't break his prayer, but once his daughter removed the intestines and Muhammad finished his prayer, he prayed to Allah to punish the entire Quraysh tribe, the polytheists, for this action undertaken by a few individuals. In another narration, he says, take revenge instead of punish. Then he cites the names of those involved and repeats his prayer to Allah to punish these people. And the person who narrates this incident then goes on saying that all of those counted by Muhammad were found dead after the Battle of Badr, so they were punished. To make it even clearer, some people harassed Muhammad, Muhammad asked Allah to punish them for that, and Allah killed those people, or made them painfully die, for harassing Muhammad, upon Muhammad's prayer. This is Muhammad, and this is Allah. Sounds nothing like the story at the beginning, right? For a virtuous prophet, the most perfect human, Muhammad seems to have a pretty harsh temper. I have no doubt that Muhammad would have killed these people immediately if this incident had occurred at a later time, where Muhammad had power. At this time, he was still a guy who was rejected by the vast majority of his people. When Muhammad became more powerful, he was anything but forgiving in the face of criticism and insults and harassments, whatever. In fact, let's go into the most reliable biography about Muhammad, The Life of Muhammad by Ibn Saq. On page 675 and 676, it says that a man, known as Abu Afaq, expressed his disaffection when Muhammad killed someone for retaliation. Abu Afaq wrote a poem criticizing Muhammad. The poem goes as translated, Long have I lived, but never have I seen an assembly or collection of people more faithful to their undertaking and their allies when called upon than the sons of Kaila when they assembled. 
Sons of Kaila refers to two tribes that meanwhile submitted to Muhammad. Men who overthrew mountains and never submitted. A rider who came to them split them in two, saying, permitted, forbidden, of all sorts of things. The rider is Muhammad. Permitted and forbidden refers to Muhammad's weird new interventions in everything people do. Had you believed in glory or kingship, you would have followed Tubba. Tuba was a king in Yemen, whom the formerly mentioned tribes opposed. Abu Afaq mentions Tuba here because of the irony that the tribes resisted King Tuba, who had a great reputation and a lot of power, but then submitted so easily to Muhammad, who is unjust, invasive, and an outsider. When Muhammad heard of this poem, he wasn't pleased at all. The apostle said, Who will deal with this rascal for me? Whereupon Salim bin Umayr went forth and killed him. An interesting detail here is that this man who was killed, who wrote the poem, Abu Afaq, was reportedly, according to the same sources, a man who was 120 years old, an old man at the end of his life. This man was sick and sad about how the people submit to Muhammad, to his outlandish weird teachings, to his arbitrary orders. He was killed upon the orders of Muhammad for criticizing Muhammad, for criticizing people for submitting to him. But hey, it goes on. Since Muhammad had ordered the death of Abu Afaq, a woman, oh look, here we have a real existing woman, a woman called Asma bin Marwan wrote a poem in anger and dissatisfaction about this incident. You obey a stranger who is none of yours, one not of Murad or Madij, two tribes of Yemen. Do you expect good from him after the killing of your chiefs, like a hungry man waiting for a cook's broth? Is there no man of pride who would attack him by surprise and cut off the hopes of those who would expect aught from him? This woman is heavily upset and angry about the killing of the old man, of the chief, and writes this poem. Muhammad's response? Let's read. When the apostle heard what she had said, he said, Who will rid me of Marwan's daughter? Umair, who was with him, heard him, and that very night he went to her house and killed her. In the morning he came to the apostle and told him what he had done, and Muhammad said, You have helped God and his apostle, O Umair. When Umair asked if he would have to bear any evil consequences, the apostle said, Two goats won't butt their heads about her. So Umair went back to his people. So Muhammad thanked his follower, his minion, for killing the woman as well, and said there wouldn't be any consequences, because it was in the service of Allah and the Prophet. Ibn Ishaq, the author of the biography, even goes on from here, saying that after this, the people of the affected tribe started to fear Islam and see the power of Islam, and that afterward, these people started becoming Muslims and submitting to Islam. The biography blatantly states that Islam spread here by fear, by terror. This is the real Islam. This is what really happens in Islam. People can make up sweet, lovely stories about Muhammad all they want. Fundamentalist Muslims, real Muslims, revivalist Muslims, most Muslims will keep preserving and upholding the real face of Islam, which is fear, death, blood, destruction oppression. And as long as that is kept up, we all have a problem that we all need to see. By the way, I recommend everyone to read this book. This is one of the fundamental scriptures of Islam, the biography of Muhammad, a very early one. And if you read this, you will learn the truth about Islam, about Muhammad. It won't be sugar-coated. You will see that it's terrifying. Thanks for watching. My videos are mostly not monetized. If you want to support me and my cause, you can support me on Patreon and on apostateprofit.com. Thank you all for your contributions. I will be back soon again with another video. Have a great, wonderful day and stay away from Islam.